Hey, good morning. I'm going to show you how to use three shape to design a custom healing abutment based off of a virtual implant plan. So that's ready for placement the day of the implant placement. Uh, so this is what we're looking to make. This is a 3D printed custom healing abutment on top of a non-engaging tie base. So when we're doing the virtual implant plan, uh, we get these files at the end of it. In this case, it's a guided implant placement. So we have our surgical guide and our surgical report. So this is a number 19. We're placing an Astra EV 4.8. There's also this DCM file. Here it's labeled lower jaw scan with implant info. This file holds our intraoral scan, but it's merged with our uh, virtual implant placement. So this is the file we wanna use. So I'm gonna navigate to 3Shape, and we're going to make a new order. And let's name our case. Select our tooth number, object type. We're using a digital impression. And then we want an abutment. We're going to do a screw retained crown. These are the uh, DES library files here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use DES tie base 0 0.045 that's the cement gap um, let's find our astra ev tie base there we go and then we're going to use a 4.8 non-engaging tie base there we go 15.061 so that's the file we want to use i see it flipped so that there's an antagonist i'm going to switch that to none for this case all right let's click ok now you're gonna right click the case, import the scan. Here's our lower jaw scan with implant info. Again, that's our intraoral scan plus our virtual implant from our treatment plan. This is asking for the abutment alignment scan. We're just gonna select the same scan. All right, right click, click design. And we're just going to skip ahead to segmentation. All right, so this is all based on that virtual plan. There's our implant and then there's our tie base. Click next. And click next. Now we're going to do our best to position this crown uh, to where we want the final restoration. The most critical part, though, is going to be where it emerges from the tissue. And let's pull that all the way down. One thing with this three shape crown is it's kind of flat on the bottom. So we're gonna use our morph tool. Make sure that's a nice big circle. Hold control. Now that arrow appears, you can drag the bottom of that to the implant there. And we're gonna widen this area too. This will help when we're designing the emergence profile. I know it looks ugly. Okay, let's look at where that crown's coming. Oh, through the gums there. Okay, that's way too far apical. So we're gonna bring that in. Let's see if we can puff this out a little bit. Again, I'm using the morph tool and then just holding control to get the arrows and then moving the mouse. Lingual. Bring that in. We want to kind of position this though over the uh, collar of that tie base. There we go. Same thing on the buckle. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna grab the spray can. We can smooth some of these contours out just a little bit, just to get that emergence to where you want it to be. Okay, I like it. I'm gonna just thicken this up down here by the collar. Again, it doesn't matter if we go into it. You'll see in the next step when we're doing our emergence profile. Good. Click next. This is the emergence profile step. One thing I found helpful in this step is, see these big orange dots here? If you take one and move it around, it's gonna really deform it. So undo that. If you click the dot and then hold control, you can actually spin all of them around. So go ahead, bring them in all the way towards the tie base, and then position them buckle, lingual, mesial, distal as best you can. Nice. Okay, now we're going to grab this purple dot in the center. We're going to drag this all the way down to the collar. Perfect. And then if we turn on our crown a little bit here, off to the left, there's a snap to anatomy button. Click that. Okay, we've snapped the anatomy. Sometimes you need to click it a couple times. And now we're gonna grab each of these big orange dots. And let me just get rid of everything here so you can see the lines. I want that. So there's this black line up here and it intersects with the gray line. So the black line is our intraoral scan. So that's the tissue. And then the gray lines are waxed up crown. So we want to bring this dot just below where those lines meet. Okay, and we'll do it this side. It's actually really close. Let's bring it just below it. Uh, maybe just right at that one. We're gonna bring it a little closer to that intersection there. Okay, and let's grab this dot here. Bring it way up there. This one's there. Okay, now we have this one left. Sweet. Okay, this is the cool part. There are these green dots. This controls your convexity or concavity. I'm gonna hit undo there. Our subgingival emergence profile, we want it to either be straight or slightly concave, and that'll give us um, plenty of room for some tissue volume. So I'm gonna actually bring that in a little bit. Make that concave. Same thing here, slight concavity. This one will leave straight, and same with the buckle. Awesome. All right, we'll go to the next step. This is where you get to do any final touch-ups to your crown. Um, we did most of those a few steps back, the step right before the emergence profile, so we won't need to do anything here. Click Next. And yes to this minimum thickness. Click Yes to All. Nice. All right, ugly, right? Doesn't matter, we're gonna get rid of that. Um, up here in the upper left, there's this plain cut tool. Go ahead and click that. Um, if your smooth radius is set to a really small value, go ahead and set it to just one. I found that works out pretty well. There we go. So, see what we did there? Um, now it's gone. I'm going to do plain cut again. Let me just hit undo so you can see it again. Okay, we'll do our plain cut. So there's a limit to how far apical you can use this plane cut tool. We'll see the limit coming up here. There it is, okay. So it won't work there. So we're gonna bring it up just a little bit so it cuts the crown off, the healing abutment there. And we'll angle this a little bit. Nope, oh, didn't like that. There we go. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna switch to the spray can, switch to our smooth tool. And we're gonna really smooth these contours out. 
Let's bulk this up a little bit. And this is all just preference on how you want the shape to look. I'm not gonna spend too much time going through it. One thing I do wanna show you though, is if you make it too flat, let me use the remove tool. There it is. So that's the um, top of the implant tie base there, right? So that's okay if you need it to be there. Um, you actually have to cover it though before you manufacture. That's something that you can grind away with the lab burr after the fact. So let's just say we want it there. Um, in this attachment kit here, there's cylinders and we can attach a small cylinder to this area. That way it's covered and then we'll just plan on grinding that away um, during post-processing after we've 3D printed it. Okay. There we go, attachments on. Click next. All right, again, this bleb up top here, we'll plan on grinding that away after we've 3D printed the healing abutment and bonded it to the tie base. And there we go. So now we have our custom healing abutment. Needs just a little bit of modification after the fact. And then we'll bond that to our non-engaging tie base. Um, go ahead, click close to access the output files. You need to go to advanced, generate cam output. And then right click the case again, advanced, explore cam. And then we have our custom healer here. Uh, let's just open it with mesh mixer. Just so you can see it. There we go. Now that is ready for 3D printing or milling. Um, after you're done with that, bond it to your tie base. Go ahead and take your lab burr and grind that bubble on top off. And that's it. Uh, please message with any questions. I'm happy to make more videos. Thanks for listening today.